Humanity's quest for speed has been relentless, driven by the dream to shrink the globe beneath our feet. From the first horseback riders to the jet age, our desire to move faster has shaped civilizations, economies, and cultures. The quest led to the birth of the Concorde. Two decades ago, the Concorde redefined luxury travel, whisking passengers across the Atlantic in half the time of conventional aircraft. It turned the dream of time-bending travel into reality. A journey from London to Singapore? Reduced from 17 hours to just seven. New York to London? Less than three and a half hours, slicing the conventional time in half. When we talk about supersonic, we're talking about speeds faster than sound itself, but what does it really mean? Let's put this into perspective. The world's most rapid trains glide through the countryside at speeds of up to 286 miles per hour. The fastest cars barely scratch the surface at 330 miles per hour. Now, consider the Boeing 737, a staple in modern air travel, cruising at a leisurely 520 miles per hour. Yet, to truly enter the realm of supersonic, we must leap to speeds exceeding 767 miles per hour. This speed known as Mach 1 represents the threshold where we break the sound barrier. The legendary Concorde, an icon of air travel, soared at speeds of up to 1,350 miles per hour, mirroring the top speed of today's military F-16 fighter jets. When the Concorde first soared into the skies in 1969, it was heralded as the future of air travel. But the excitement was soon met with a stark reality. As it shattered the sound barrier, the Concorde unleashed sonic booms so powerful they were likened to bomb explosions. As an aircraft pierces the sound barrier, it pushes air aside with such force that it creates a shockwave akin to the bow wave of a speeding boat. This shockwave compresses the air into a cone, building up pressure. When this pressure is suddenly released, it results in a sonic boom, much like the loud pop when a balloon is pricked. It's nature's way of announcing the breach of the sound barrier. This auditory onslaught led to a significant backlash. By 1971, the uproar had grown so loud that Congress stepped in, banning supersonic flight over land in the United States, a restriction that echoed around the world. Despite its groundbreaking speed, the Concorde was bound to the oceans. Its supersonic talents silenced over the continents. The Concorde continued to grace the skies until 2003, but the economic viability of operating such an aircraft constrained to overwater flights couldn't be justified. The dream of commercial supersonic travel was grounded, a victim of its own thunderous success. But what if we could overcome these challenges? Behind the scenes, away from the rocket launches and spacewalks, NASA has been working on a project that could redefine what it means to fly fast. Decades after supersonic flight over land was banned, NASA embarked on a mission to change the narrative of supersonic booms. The breakthrough came with advancements in high-speed computing and machine learning, enabling precise predictions of sonic shock interactions from high altitudes. Dave Richardson from Lockheed Martin highlighted the shift from costly, time-consuming wind tunnel tests to efficient computer simulations. Armed with these technological advances, NASA initiated the Quest program, aiming to transform the disruptive sonic boom into a subtle thump. This initiative led to the development of the X-59 Quest, designed to demonstrate that supersonic travel over land could be as quiet as a dishwasher running momentarily, far softer than the Concorde's roar comparable to a chainsaw. Lockheed Martin's $247.5 million contract with NASA to build the X-59 marked a significant step towards reintroducing supersonic travel into mainstream aviation, with the ultimate goal of making long-haul flights faster and environmentally friendly. The journey from concept to the X-59 began long before Quest, within the walls of Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works. The journey started with the C-100, evolving through various designs, each iteration bringing us closer to the dream of quiet supersonic flight. From the V-tail to the traditional tail, from bulky designs to the sleek, fine nose, of the X-59. Each step was a lesson in aerodynamics and noise reduction. Through trial, error, and innovation, the team discovered the importance of streamlining, positioning heavy parts towards the rear, and eliminating shape discontinuities that contribute to sonic booms. This meticulous design process led to the X-59's unique features. The Concorde, 
Unlike the X-59, was built for speed rather than quietness. The X-59 redefines what we expect from supersonic travel. This single-seater jet isn't just fast, flying at 925 miles per hour or 1.4 times the speed of sound, it's a testament to modern engineering aimed at proving that speed doesn't have to come with noise. Drawing inspiration from the iconic Concorde, NASA incorporated elements like delta wings and a streamlined body into the X-59. Yet, it's the jet's extraordinary 38-foot carbon fiber nose that truly sets it apart. Unlike the Concorde, this nose is fixed, challenging pilots to rely on a camera for visibility during critical phases of flight. But once airborne, this elongated nose plays a crucial role in softening the sonic boom, akin to minimizing the splash of a cannonball die. In the air, the X-59's design philosophy is simple. Keep the underside smooth to direct any potential booms upwards, away from people. The plane's T-tail is engineered to interact with the shock waves, further mitigating the noise. This intricate dance of design and aerodynamics aims to reshape our sonic landscape, making supersonic travel over land not just a possibility, but a whisper-quiet reality. With its design finalized, the X-59 embarks on a path filled with rigorous ground tests before taking to the skies. Scheduled for its inaugural flight later this year, this milestone will be followed by its first quiet supersonic flight. The initial test flights are set to occur in California, showcasing a collaboration between Lockheed's and NASA's research centers. NASA's ambitious plan involves flying the X-59 over selected cities across the United States, gathering public feedback on its sonic presence. This crucial data will inform regulators and the air travel industry, underlining NASA's commitment to revolutionize commercial supersonic travel. As Bob Pierce from NASA articulates, this endeavor aims not just to pioneer new markets, but to enrich global travel experiences. But NASA isn't the only major player working to bring supersonic flight back from the past and into the future of air travel. Boom Supersonic, a private company based in Colorado, also aims to bring commercial supersonic flights back to U.S. airlines by 2029. When completed, its passenger aircraft, Overture, is expected to fly at speeds up to Mach 1.7, which is about 1,300 miles per hour, or twice as fast as today's passenger planes. The resurgence of supersonic air travel not only promises quieter sonic booms and reduced wildlife disturbance, but also aims for significant environmental advancements. This new era of luxury, efficient flying offers a nod to the past while promising a greener, faster future, appealing especially to business travelers for whom time is of the essence, potentially reducing jet lag and making day trips across continents feasible. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling journey through the evolving landscape of supersonic travel. A special shout out to NASA for their groundbreaking work in this field. If you're captivated by stories of optimism in science and technology and wish to support our content, subscribing is the best way to show your love. We can't wait to bring you more exciting developments in our next episode.